Hello. In this video, what I'd like to do is to take a simple example, um, a, a system of simultaneous equations, and solve this using um, MATLAB. Now, what I'm going to do really is um, meant to be just an introduction to MATLAB, and so this is just for practice purpose. This is actually this first method I'm going to use is definitely not the way you're going to solve any system of equations, really. But I want to solve this using Cramer's rule. So once you have a um, an a system of simultaneous equations, it makes a lot of sense to write it in matrix form. And once it's in matrix form, MATLAB should come to mind, really. So it's in matrix form. Let's go ahead and solve this using MATLAB. So I'm going to define this um, matrices in MATLAB. I don't need to define the x1 and x2 because x1 and x2 are simply variables. So we don't have to define that matrix. So first matrix we're defining is we call that our matrix A. So because typically we say that this is in the form AX is equal to B. So matrix A is 1, 2, 1, minus 1. 1, 2, semicolon, 1, minus 1. I'll put a semicolon out there because I don't need to display it. Once I have a semicolon out there, I can as well go ahead and define the B matrix on the same line. I don't have to go to a new line. And what we have is 4, semicolon, 2. I could put a semicolon so neither of them is displayed here. Now, um, just so that things are clear, I'm going to clear my workspace and um, I'll re, re, um, re enter these commands once I clear my workspace. So, clear, clear, clear my workspace, and then I'll go ahead and enter this once again. So, I have those two matrices defined in my workspace. So, I have them defined in my workspace. Now, to solve this, if you remember Kramer's rule, um, okay, let me display my display my A. So this is my A matrix. Um, and display my B matrix. Now, in Kramer's rule, to find the first solution, the first variable, you take in this um, colon, you replace the first colon of your A by your B, you find the determinant of that, and you divide that answer by the determinant of your original A. So if you want, you are looking for the determinant of your modified A, and then you divide it by determinant of A. So that's what we want to do. But then we have not created this matrix modified A. So let me go ahead and create that matrix modified A, and then I'll now come back and run this command. So let's say mod A is equal to, now we have A. Let me say mod A is equal to A. Then mod A is exactly equal to A, but this is not what we want. Mod A, we want the first column of, of mod A to be equal to B. And then the second column of mod A is fine to, as is. So I want to change what is in the first column of mod A. So I'm going to say mod A. Um, the first column of mod A now, I want to change that. So the first column, that's all the rows in the column 1 of mod A. Make them equal to B. So I'm taking the values in B. And I'm assigning them, I'm writing them into the location of all the rows of column, um, of the first column. I won't put a semicolon so we see what the solution is. And notice my B is now in the first column of mod A. So this is a way you can modify the columns um, or the elements within a matrix. This does not just select the elements. If you want to write into the matrix, you can go ahead and write into the matrix. So we have this. So now I can say that my x1 is equal to mod A, sorry, um, determinant of mod A divided by determinant of A. And that works perfectly well. That gives us our x1. Um, now I need to find my um, second variable. To find the second variable, I'm going to more or less repeat the last couple of steps I did, but this time my mod A has to be um, the second column of A is what I'm going to replace. So mod A is equal to A, and then mod A, all the rows in column two, I'm replacing them with B. Um, then I now have that my X2 is equal to determinant of mod A divided by determinant of A. And this gives me the second variable. So I have my, I can display, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to display a vector that will have x1 and x2 inside of it. And so this just displays my x1 and my x2 and this is my result. In fact, let me make this look a little pretty. Now use something I've not used so far. So this is called a string 
everything I type in here inside this single colon and uh, single inverted commas will simply be a string. The solution to the system is, and then I now type this. So the solution to the system is that. That is fine. So we've solved our system. However, remember I said, and we use Kramer's rule, but remember I said nobody ever really does this, and I don't expect you to do this really in any situation. MATLAB has a command that this is probably the only case where you use this command when you're trying to solve simultaneous equations. We have our A, we have our B. Now the inverse of A, the inverse of A multiplied by B gives us this same solution we just found. Inverse of A multiplied by B, notice is exactly the same solution we just found, and that is a way to solve this set, um, the system of simultaneous equations. But there is a better command that is a little more efficient than first of all finding the inverse and then multiplying by B, and that is using the backslash command. So this A backslash B will solve this same system, but it will look for the best method possible. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of this, but really what happens is you end up having um, row reduction going on in the back end, and then so it doesn't necessarily find the inverse, nor does it find the determinant before finding the solution. Um, so it just finds it in the most efficient way possible. And this is the method you would typically use if you wanted to find a solution to a system of um, simultaneous equations. So I'm going to do one last thing. I know I'm kind of jumping the gun a little bit in doing this. I'm going to press my up arrow key. And in my up arrow key, I'm going to select everything that we had in the Kramer's rule. So I clicked on the first one. I'll hold down the control key on my keyboard and select all the other um, commands I want to select. Um, so I'm going to select this, this, this. Um, come up and select this, this, this and then that command. So I haven't selected all of them. I'll right click on any one of them and I'll say create script. Create script. I'll click on that. That will open up MATLAB's editor. It opens up another window which is MATLAB's editor and this is the um, window in which we create um, MATLAB programs. Now this is actually a MATLAB program. It is just simply a set of commands that we typically can type in the command window that is what a MATLAB program is. All the commands you can type in a command window, you can save them inside a file and you call them, you call it a MATLAB program. This program is called a script and I'll differentiate between scripts and functions, but for now, let me just give this a name. So I'll give it the name Kramers. Okay, so I'm giving it the name Kramers. Now I can close it and I'm going to do something. I'm going to close and um, clear my command window and clear my workspace. If I just simply now type the command Kramers, Notice Kramers is a file inside my current folder. If I just type the command Kramers, notice what happens at the workspace and what happens at the command window. Enter, and all those commands inside that file now run. And so you see A, B, mod A, and everything is defined within the workspace. And notice that the display that we wrote inside the program actually displays here. So I can double click on this here, come back to this file. And now let me not display anything to the command window apart from what I told you to display, that is these two lines. So these two lines will be displayed to command window, nothing else. I'll save this, come back to my command window, clear it, clear, clear my workspace again. I don't have to clear both, but then I'll just go ahead and clear it. Type Kramers once again. And now all it does is display the solution to the system is 2.667 and 0.667. So I'll stop this video at this point, and in the next video, um, I believe I'll start talking about scripts and functions, that is MATLAB programs. Thank you.